Toastmaster, fellow Toastmaster and most welcome guests. It may be white or it may be red. It may be dry or it may be sweet. It may be young or it may be old. I'm talking about one of the most divine pleasures in, in life, which is wine. I'm going to talk about wine. And tonight I'm going to talk about wine. I'm going to talk about three different parts. One, I'm going to talk a little bit about history and evolution of wine. Then I'm going to talk about the second part, a little bit about the regions, about the classifications, about the varieties. And thirdly, I will talk about some tips or some uh, guidelines for us to be able to enjoy wine as much as we can. So, in terms of the, uh, the history of wine, uh, way back to 7,000 years ago, there were nomadic tribes that were roaming around the Mediterranean and they were known for producing some kind of wine. And then about 4,000 BC, there's evidence that the Egyptians were producing wine. <clears throat> and then more recently, there were the Greeks who were producing wine and were drinking a lot of wine as well. And as a matter of fact, they said that the god Bacchus was the one that created wine. In terms of the regions, wine has spread around the world, many countries. But it all started in France. They were producing high volumes of wine. Then it was Italy. Then it was Spain, Portugal, and many other countries. But from Spain, it's known that Spain brought into the Americas the wine, and it was spread around Chile, Argentina, and Mexico. Now, most recently, the last entry into the wine industry is the USA. The Mondavi family in California, Northern California, basically the Napa and the Sonoma <laughs> Valleys, they decided to enter the industry and they went to France and they made two joint ventures with French wineries. And out of that, they entered the industry and they shifted from being an industry based on what is called terroir, which means a region, and inside that region, a little piece of land from which the, the, uh, the, the wine comes, and that's what is called terroir. And they changed that, they shifted to what is now a world global industry based on branding and kinds of varieties of wine in, around the world. <coughs> now, as I said before, first it was terroir and then it was the branding. And talking about terroir, what is called is appellation d'origine contrôlée, which is how they, they look at the, where they come from. And um, as a matter of fact, the Italians also have denominazione d'origine controllato. Second, I'm gonna talk a little bit about varieties. And um, there's so many, and they're so widespread, that I'm gonna talk about right here at home, Ontario. Ontario, and more specifically, the Niagara Peninsula produces over 80% of the wine produced in Canada. And more specifically, there are regions, which in Canada are called designation of origin, called VQA, I'll talk about VQA a little, a little later, and uh, those are the Niagara Peninsula, or the Niagara region, Prince Edward County, and the north shores of Lake Erie. So within that, within Ontario, in these three regions, why the Niagara Peninsula, the Niagara Escarpment, and Niagara on the Lake, there are about 125 wineries that produce around 30 different varieties. And uh, around those varieties, we can talk about the most prominent ones. And when you talk about red, you talk about Pinot Noir, you talk about Sauvignon Cabernet, and you talk also about Merlot. When we're talking about whites, you can look at uh, Sauvignon Blanc, and then you also look at uh, Pinot Gris, and finally, Riesling. And I want to stop a little bit with Riesling because that is my favorite wine. Riesling is a white wine that comes from the Niagara Escarpment, and more specifically, from a, from a town called Jordan, and the winery is called Cave Springs. And that's my favorite wine. And it's a white wine that came from Germany. The, the grape was brought from Germany. 
And as, as a matter of fact, it can be also aged, just as white uh, red wine can be aged. So now when we talk about the varieties, let's talk about how you can enjoy wine as, as, as much as possible. Right here. So we are fortunate enough, us as human beings, that we have the sense of smell, taste, hearing, touch, and the most prominent ones that we use are taste, smell, and, uh, and, and odor. So smell, and then the other one will be touch and eyesight. So when we talk about eyesight, what we can talk about, first of all, is the first thing you do is to look at through the light and you see, first of all, the color. You see the purity. And the one thing that you see also when you go a little bit like this, when the drops come down, you see something that's called the legs. And when you go about the legs, the shorter they are, the more sugar content that you will have. Then, next thing what you do is to taste it and smell it. And that comes together. It has to come together. And what ex experts do, is they go like this, Swirl around like that, and then you smell it, smell the bouquet, and then the taste. But when you taste it, <laughs> you don't drink it right away. You leave it on the mouth a little bit so you can really taste it well. So the next thing that we do is how can we use wine to pair it with food to make it even more pleasurable? What happens is you get reds mostly, or whites, you use, you, you use whites in order to pair them with fish, delicate flavors, poultry, and then that's called more of an aperitif. Then a dish of steam <coughs> white is the red wine that you can pair with more stronger flavors, which can be uh, red meat or a pasta or even uh, cheese. And when you think about France producing around 365 kinds of cheese, just imagine the possibilities of pairing wine with cheese. Now we talked about those, but let's not forget about dessert wines, because that's where Canada comes into the play, and more specifically Ontario. Because in Ontario, there's a wine that is called ice wine that is produced from uh, frozen uh, grapes, and this wine has a large quantity of, um, of sugar, so it's very sweet, and it's become a delicatessen all around the world, and you got these bottles that can be over $100. So, you know, you can be um, overwhelmed with all these things about, you know, the wine, the pairing, the classification, the smell, the this and that. And I went to a tour, and the young entrepreneur, the owner of the winery said, you know what, this is the thing about wine. You take a wine, you taste it, you like it or you don't like it. So after that, you're going to get worried about what you see, make more sophistication of what kind of wine and how it would go. So that's what, uh, that's what I, I, I think I, I, I say the same thing. Just taste it, like it, don't like it, and then you get a little more, more sophisticated because it's an acquired taste. As a matter of fact, in Canada, beer was the, 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 the main beverage, and now more and more people are converting into wine. So ladies and gentlemen, the one thing I want to say to you today is that whatever you eat, whatever you do, it just gets better with a little bit of better with a glass, nice glass of wine. This is my mother toastmaster.